Happy Sentinels Tuesday, everybody. We're back on the regular recording schedule for the regular Sentinels Tuesday videos. And today we are looking at the villain Shadow Weaver from She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, deck created by Arky the Seventh and Doom Slug. She's a very nasty person with shadow powers, as, as far as I can tell. Opposing her, we have Lifeline, Necro Warden of Chaos, Lantern Jack, brings some light to the darkness, and Hope Star is coming back with the face behind her, Holly Owens, and we'll be fighting in the Azorius Senate. So at the start of the game, Shaders play Cruel Manipulator's side up. We search the villain deck for the Black Garnet and put it into play. Start of the villain turn if she has X times 5 or fewer HP, where X is the number of cards under her character card, she flips. First time she's dealt damage each turn, put the top card of the villain deck under her. At the end of the villain turn, if there are three or more other villain cards in play, destroy two of them, and Shadow Weaver deals each hero target two lightning damage. Otherwise, play the top card of the villain deck. And then she deals each hero next to a villain scheme, two irreducible psychic damage, put the top card of each of those heroes' decks under Shadow Weaver's villain character card. That's all we need to know. Let's go. Grasping Shadow, Shadow Spy. At the end of the villain turn, put two hero ongoing and or equipment cards under Shadow Weaver's character card. Gross. Good thing to start the game with. There are not three or more other villain cards in place, so she gets another card play. It's another Grasping Shadow. Okay. Hopefully we can do something about that. She deals no damage. Black Garnet says whenever another villain card is destroyed, Shadow Weaver deals the hero target with the highest HP H lightning damage. This card is destroyed during the villain turn, each player discards a card. Might be worth risking. All right, and then there's nothing to destroy. Let's go ahead and get working on that. Hero. Hit all three of those, because I do want to also get rid of the Black Garnet. He will let himself draw two cards. Let's get Corpse Explosion out, and Reckless Summon a Backfire Hex, which does nothing. Unfortunate. Draw a card. I'm going to put out Sin's Laid Bear and go ahead and use that. We'll have the Grasping Shadow take itself out. The Lantern Jack hits himself for two. Draw a card. Okay, we are going to start by playing Envy on Necro. So Sonic Infernal and Toxic Damage dealt by that target reduces the next damage dealt by the target who takes damage that way by two. So her power is never ending will. The next time an emotion card would leave play because of the effect on the emotion card, prevent it. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Draw two cards. Azorius Senate plays the Grand Arbiter. Judgment cards are indestructible. Whenever a player plays a card, they must discard a card. Whenever a villain card is played, discard the top card of the villain deck. Well, that's interesting. And we don't know damage to her. Okay. All right, she does not flip. She plays They'll Never Understand You, which is a scheme. Discard the top card of the villain deck. Play this card next to the hero with at least schemes next to them. That hero and that hero's cards cannot affect or be affected by any other hero card or effect from another hero deck. That hero draws an additional card during the draw phase. I'm going to give that to Lantern Jack. He's cool. All right, there are not three or more other villain cards in play. Oh, wait, yes, there are. We're going to destroy the Grasping Shadow, and we may as well destroy the scheme. This makes her deal Lifeline and Hope Star for lightning damage, and then she hits everybody for two, and she deals no further damage, and that's it. Let's go ahead and get the Orphic Repository out, use that to hit the Black Garnet for two, draw a card, and soak up that card. Necro will play Tainted Blood, the top card of his deck is a Talisman, put that on lifeline I guess. Draw a card, he's getting there, getting there. Lantern Jack will play Truth Comes to Light, so whenever a non-hero target is destroyed, he regains hit points. We'll use Sin's Laid Bear, Garnet does not take itself out, so he does no damage, draw a card. Oh wait, and we need to be discarding cards because we're playing cards. Alright, Hopestar is going to play Prepared Plan and discard the other one. Two players may choose a power. If a power deals damage this way, change the damage type to one of your choice. Let's see, let's use the Orphic Repository. So he deals two targets, two Infernal Damage each. He'll hit Shadow Weaver, so she gets a card from under her deck, and he'll take out the Black Garnet. Let's have Necro... There we go, we got a Zomb. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I need to tap her because that's active. Oh, right, start of her turn, we'll say that we dealt him no damage and did not destroy the card. So we'll activate that again. I won't discard, just draw a card. Need to get rid of that Judge. Azoria Senate plays Dovin Bond's Foresight. When this card is player, reveal the top three cards of each deck. Put a Judgment card revealed this way into play. Replace the other cards in their original order, then destroy this card. There's three Judgment cards. Which one do we want? We're going to play the Detention Sphere. At the end of the environment turn, move this card next to the non-environment target with lowest HP. The target cannot deal damage, that is the zombie. Destroy Dovin Bonds for me. Shadow Weaver plays Mystic Consumption. Discard the top card of her deck. She deals the hero target with the lowest HP for infernal damage and regains 4 HP. Destroy two villain ongoing cards and two hero ongoing cards. So she's back to full. There are no villain ongoing cards in play. The hero target with the lowest HP is the zombie, who is killed. So Necro hits her for two. Reduce the next damage she deals by one. I'm going to assume that just moves back to the environment play area now. We have to destroy two ongoing cards. Oh, Sin's Laid Bear don't need. I guess I'm going to let Envy go. 
but it was helpful at least. End of turn, play top card of the villain deck. I made you what you are, scheme. Play this card next to the hero with the fewest schemes next to them. Whenever the hero next to this card deals damage, they regain a hit point, and Shadow Weaver regains two hit points. I'm going to put that on Lantern Jack. Actually, no, I'm going to put that on Lifeline. I think that'll be good. And then she hits him for two, and it's irreducible, right? The top card of his deck under her character card. She will flip with 20 HP. All right, Lifeline will play Matter Manipulator. Discard a card. Power, Orphic Repository. Hit the Judge for two. Shadow Weaver heals two. He heals one. Draw a card, except we will use Extract Power. So he draws a card, and we'll let Hope Star draw a card. And then eat that card out of the trash. Play a Final Ritual, just get a zombie out. He deals himself X Toxic Damage, X is twice the number of cards put him to play this way. Hits himself for two, hits that zombie for two. Gee, let's use his power! What might happen? Chaotic Summon, oh my god! Book of the Dead! Well, let's get Blood Right, and then second card off the Chaotic Summon is another Talisman. Let's put that on Lantern Jack. Draw a card, and he takes out the zombie, so everybody heal two. Oh yeah, don't forget to discard it because of the Arbiter. He hits Shadow Weaver for two, Envy is no longer on him, so that's it. Lantern Jack will play Haunt the Guilty, deal the target two infernal damage. Reveal the top card of the villain deck. It is a scheme, you need me. Reduce damage dealt by that hero to villain targets and by villain targets to that hero by one. Yeah, we really don't want schemes out if we can avoid it, so we'll discard that. He regains two HP. Power, let's hit Judge for three. Also discard a card. He hits himself for one and draw a card. Hopestar will play Happiness on Lantern Jack. So whenever he deals energy or radiant damage, he also regains a hit point. Can't heal him past his max, but that's fine. We will keep her power activated and just draw a card. Oh right, and Judgment cards are indestructible, so when the next one comes into play, it doesn't destroy the previous. So the lowest HP, non-environment target is Lantern Jack, unfortunately. And then we got Law Mage's Binding. Play this card next to the hero with the highest HP. Whenever that hero uses a power, they must discard two cards. I want to put that on Hope Star and hope I can get rid of it. Oh yeah, and Hope Star got arbitrated. Shadow Weaver does not flip. She plays Whispering Shadow. Discard the top card of her deck. The end of the villain turn, reveal the top two cards of the villain deck. Play each scheme revealed, discard the rest. For each card discarded this way, this card deals the hero target with the second highest HP to infernal damage. All right, there are three or more other villain cards in play. So I'm gonna drop two of the ones under her because they're still in play, so that counts. Everybody take two lightning damage. Each hero next to a scheme, two irreducible psychic damage. That's still just lifeline. I should have destroyed them. She eats one of his cards. And then we discard the top two cards of her deck. That's a one-shot and a shadow spy. So the second highest is Necro or Hope Star. Necro will take the first one, and then lifeline can take... I think this is a good time for a natural upheaval. Let's destroy that scheme, and he'll do two infernal damage to Shadow Weaver. Oh yeah, and I also have to discard a card. Power, Orphic Repository, let's kill the freaking Arbiter. Hit her for two, draw a card, except we'll use his base power. Draw a card, and draw a card. Let's Grand Summon. Got a ghoul and a zombie. I will play the zombie, and put the ghoul in the trash. Shuffle the deck. Now let's play the top card of his deck. Hey, it's a ghoul. Two ghoul for school. Draw a card. He will hit the ghoul for two. And let's see, the zombie goes after the highest, which is Hope Star, unfortunately. And the ghoul goes after the second lowest, which is Lifeline, who's immune. All right, Lantern Jack cannot deal damage. He will skip and draw two. All right, start of turn, we do not destroy that card, and it doesn't destroy itself. Lifeline does do fire and melee damage. Let's make him angry. So yeah, whenever he deals fire melee or projectile damage, increase it by one. Then we will activate her power. I'm gonna go ahead and discard and draw two. Oh, and then she has to discard. Actually, let's not use her power. She has to discard two cards if I do that. Okay, well, another judgment comes out, so it destroys all the judgment cards. Thank goodness. First time each turn, any target deals damage, play the top card of the environment deck. Not better. She does not flip. Instead, she plays what you've always wanted. Ah, play this card next to the hero with the least schemes next to them. That hero may search their deck for an ongoing card, put it in their hand, they shuffle their deck, and then they can't use powers. I'm gonna put that on Hope Star. What other ongoings does she have? If I can get another Envy, let's do that. End of turn. Let's actually destroy that scheme and the Whispering Shadow. Everybody take two. Oh boy. First thing she does is she kills the ghoul. So she takes two. Everybody heal two. And there are no schemes out, so that's it for that. Lifeline will unleash energy. Oh yeah, play the top card of the environment deck. Render silence. Destroy all the judgment cards. Move this card to the player with the most ongoing cards, um, which is Necro. All ongoing cards in this card's player have no game text. Well, that's terrible. That's really not good. We don't want that. Hit her for two. I'm going to draw a card off of that, except Matter Manipulator to use his base power. Draw two cards. Power or for repository. Hit her for two. And... Draw a card. Yeah, that's really not good. I'm gonna Chaotic Summon. Hellfire, okay, that's got no card text. Chaotic Summon. 
chaotic summon. Cool. Abomination. Another tainted blood, which is limited. I think that's the right number of cards. Let's play the top card of his deck. Hey, you backfire hex. Oh, except that's just ongoing cards. Damn it. Put an undead card from the trash into play. Okay, let's grab another ghoul. This is really bad. All right, so the zombie hits the highest for two. That'll be Necro. The ghoul hits the second lowest for two. That's Lifeline. Everybody take two except for Lantern Jack and Lifeline. And then the ghoul hits Lifeline and he's immune. Well, let's go ahead and do Vengeful Apparition. Lantern Jack will hit himself for one. Increases next damage by three. Power, he deals a target six radiant damage, which means he heals one. And then he hits himself for one, and then he heals one. Draw a card. Okay, start of turn, Hope Star is going to dish out some damage. Let's get that Envy back on Necro. Activate her power, discard and draw two. Azoria's Senate plays Supreme Verdict. Thank goodness, destroys all their judgment cards. Start of the environment turn, destroy a non-character card in each non-environment play area, then destroy this card. That might not be too bad. Start of turn, Shadow Weaver does not flip. She plays I Made You What You Are. Whenever the hero next to this card deals damage, they regain a hit point, and Shadow Weaver regains two. That was the one I had on Lifeline earlier, I think. Let's put that on Necro. It's going to go off once around, but he doesn't deal a whole lot of damage. And there are not two extra villain cards in place, so we play another card, Garnet Lash. Shadow Weaver deals the two hero targets the highest HP for lightning damage each. That is Hope Star and Necro. Destroy a villain ongoing card. Okay. That's fine. That's her turn. Lifeline. Let's repair Leyline. That heals the zombie. I don't want to... Everybody draw a card. Play the top card of the environment deck. Restore the peace. When this card is played, target gains two hit points. Well, reduce damage dealt by one. Start the environment turn to destroy this card. Well, heck. Somebody can use a power. The power I want to use is not out. Lantern Jack can hit Shadow Weaver for two radiant damage. Heal one and hit himself for nothing. Power or for Compository. Hit her for one. I've been forgetting to put cards under her. That's why she didn't have any. There should probably be at least three under there. Instead of drawing a card, use his base power, let Necro draw a card, and absorb the top card of his trash. All right, so this definitely sucks a lot. I'm not certain there's anything I want Necro to do. He's going to skip and draw two. Okay, highest takes one, that is Lifeline, who is immune. Second lowest takes one, that is Lantern Jack, who is immune. Everybody take one, by which I mean Necro and Hope Star. And then the Ghoul hits the second lowest, which is Lantern Jack, who is immune. Hey, here's a good idea. Banish Pretense. Till the start of my turn, all damage dealt by hero targets is irreducible and cannot be redirected. So Hope Star can take advantage of this. We will prevent the damage she deals to Necro. So she hits Lantern Jack for one, she hits Lifeline for one. Whenever a hero target would deal damage, then we reduce the damage by one. Power is destroy an ongoing or environment card. Destroy this card. Well, I don't need that right now. Let's go ahead and activate her power. Swap out a card, draw two. Okay, destroy a non-character card in each non-environment play area, then destroy this card. So, a matter manipulator can go, that's fine. We will destroy the abomination. Everybody draw a card. He hits her for two because it's irreducible, reducing her next damage by one. Everybody heal two. He also hits her for three, reducing her next damage by a further one. I think that's it. Still worth it. We can destroy banish pretense because I won't need it. And unfortunately we have to destroy voice of reason and then destroy that card and restore the peace. Oh wait, I forgot the villain play area. We will destroy one of the hero cards underneath her. Azoria's Senate plays Inevitable Infraction. Judgment. First time each turn any card under play, discard the top card of that card's deck, then deal each target from that deck one psychic damage. Well, okay. Shadow Weaver plays a Grasping Shadow. Discard the top card of her deck. Hit her for one, she gets a card underneath herself, and also hit the shadow for one. End of turn, there's a whole bunch of villain cards in place, so let's destroy one of the ones under her, as well as the Grasping Shadow. Lantern Jack should heal, I've definitely been forgetting that. And everybody take two lightning damage, we will protect Necro from this. So he'll take nothing. Cool. Lifeline, let's do Enclave's tech. Turnark's casing, fantastic. Oh yeah, discard the top card of the deck, hit him for, it doesn't matter what the top card was, because he got shuffled back in. Power. I'm actually just going to use his base power. Draw two. Draw another card. And he heals one. All right. I can probably play the Possessed Corpse. I'm going to skip his power. Oh, yeah. Discard the top card of his deck. Hit everything for one. Skip his power. Draw a card. End of turn. He hits the zombie for two and kills it. So, everybody heal two. Lantern jacks it from he hits Shadow Weaver for two and she gets a card. He hits her for three, so... Oh wait, that doesn't proc that. It's only one, so you should have one less HP. Alright, Ghoul hits the second lowest, which is Lantern Jack, who is immune. Possessed Corpse hits the lowest, which is Lantern Jack, who is immune. 
Oh, Ethereal Opponent, finally. His HP is equal to or greater than his maximum, so he will hit Shadow Weaver for four and heal one, but he can't. Then he hits himself for one and heals back to full. Draw a card. Actually, let's see, he hits himself for two and he heals one and he's below full health, so he actually heals two. Confusing. Hope Star deals no damage to Necro. She hits the other two. I'm gonna play Voice of Reason again. Use her power. Oh yeah, discard the top card. She takes one. Lantern Jack should have discarded into just draw a card. The Azoria Senate plays Deputy of Acquittals, which discards the top card of the Environment deck and takes a damage. End of the Environment turn, destroy a Judgment card. Okay. Card is destroyed this way, destroy this card. Okay. Thanks, buddy. She has six cards beneath her. She does not flip. Instead, she plays Manipulative Vulnerability. Into that hero's turn, they may destroy one of their non-character cards and regain two HP. If they don't, Shadow Weaver deals them two psychic damage. I can put that on Lifeline. I'll be fine. End of turn. Let's destroy some cards. She's probably going to flip next round. Everybody take two. First one is reduced. We'll hit Lantern Jack with that. Then she starts killing undead. Two toxic damage. Reduce her next damage by one. Three infernal damage. There's no card for her to eat off of her deck. Everybody heal two and then we'll hit necro so he only takes one and then she kills the ghoul so he hits her for two toxic damage reduce her next damage by one three infernal damage everybody heal two and then she will hit hope star who only takes one and the possessed corpse and lifeline who only takes one and then she hits lifeline for two irreducible psychic damage and eats the top card of his deck. Let's do a natural upheaval and destroy that scheme. He will deal a target two infernal damage, how the possessed corpse. Hit her for two, reduce her next damage by one, hit her for three. Everybody heal two. If you can, which Lantern Jack cannot. Power, Orphic Repository, hit her for two, draw a card, and hit her for one lightning damage, why not? All right, now I feel better playing things with Necro. Final Ritual. Get that Possessed Corpse and a Ghoul. He hits them both for three. He hits himself for four. Power. Top card of the deck is Blood Rite. Already in play. Draw a card. The Possessed Corpse hits the lowest, which is Lantern Jack, who is immune. Ghoul hits the second lowest, which is Necro, who has to suck it up. Hey, in corporeal form, he's finally set up. Hooray. Power. He will hit Shadow Weaver for four and himself for two, which means he heals two off of happiness and then he heals one off of incorporeal form which puts him over his maximum draw a card all right hope star will not hit necro she hits lantern jack who heals two again and gets another plus one and lifeline who only takes one let's do last moment idea two players may each play at one shot you may change the type of damage dealt by those cards lantern jack will burn the wicked deal a target and himself one radiant damage or if that target has more than 10 hp he instead deals that target four radiant damage make that six I'm sorry, seven, hits himself for two, which means he heals two off of happiness, he heals one off of incorporeal form, increases next damage by one. That's really confusing. Oh yeah, Necro should have hit one of these. The ley line shift. Uh, he'll hit himself for just no infernal damage. So we got Harrow, a zombie. Oh, discard the top card of the villain deck. Impersonating Shadow, Ethereal Opponents, The Mask, Azor's Elocutors. End of the environment turn, put a token on this card. And if this card has five tokens, it's Philo Buster succeeds and the heroes lose the game. So we're not going to play that for sure. Let's play the mask off of that. When Hope Star deals damage, the damage type changes to a damage of your choice. Power is discard a card and summon an emotion. I'm going to keep using her base power. We'll discard one of those extra masks and draw two. All right. Righteous Authority. Play this card next to the hero with the most cards in hand. Guess who? That's Lifeline. Increase the first damage dealt by that hero each turn by one. And that hero deals damage to or is dealt damage by an environment card. Play the top card of the environment deck and destroy this card. Well, cool. Now Lifeline has a big-ass sword to go with his cool-ass space armor. Shadow Weaver flips, and we shuffle the stack of cards together. At the end of the villain turn, discard three cards at random from beneath Shadow Weaver's character card. Play each villain card discarded this way, and for each hero card discarded this way, she deals that hero four irreducible psychic damage. If no cards were discarded this way, move three hero ongoing and or equipment cards from play under Shadow Weaver's character card, and she deals herself six irreducible infernal damage. She plays what you've always wanted. This is the one that grabs an ongoing and then you can't use powers. I'm going to put that on Necro. Does he have any ongoings left in his deck? He actually does. Put a dark pact in hand. Discard a villain card, which is Grasping Shadow. That goes into play. Discard a villain card. Mind Erasure. Each player may discard a card, then put it under Shadow Weaver's character card. Shadow Weaver deals each hero H minus X psychic damage, where X is the number of cards discarded this way. Destroy a villain ongoing card. You know what? We're going to discard nothing. We will use the minus one on Necro. So he only takes three. Everybody else takes four. Lantern Jack heals two and gets a plus one. Lifeline only takes three. Destroy what you've always wanted. The scheme is just 
don't stick around. And then the third card, also a villain card, the exact same card, in fact. We can take four more damage. It's too bad it's not each hero target. No villain ongoings to destroy. And then she gets to eat two ongoing and or equipment cards. The mask and hellfire. All right, lifeline. I guess I'll play alien arcana. Power, orphic repository, increase it by one. Hits her for three. Nothing else happens. Draw a card. At the end of turn, he pings her for one and one, and we win. Okay, that was cool. We kind of beat the shit out of her. Let's take a look at the rest of her deck. Impersonating Shadow. I don't think we actually had any of these played. Villain Scheme cards are indestructible. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals the hero with the least schemes next to them. Three irreducible psychic damage. They'll never understand you. Scheme. Plays next to a hero. That hero and their cards cannot affect or be affected by any other hero deck card or effect from another hero deck, but they draw an additional card during the draw phase. When we saw, just didn't play. Coalesce Power. Reveal cards from the top of Shadow Weaver's deck until H-1 ongoing cards are revealed. Put them into play. Shuffle the other revealed cards into the villain deck. And that is all. You can find Shadow Weaver on Sentinels of Etheria. You can find Hope Star on Zerami's Sentinels Vault and Azoria's Senate on Vansky's Sentinels Mod. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks everybody for coming to chat. It was nice having a break yesterday, but I'm glad to see you all again. Tabletop Simulator, the Reva Sentence Calder DLC, Sentinel of Etheria, Thrones Sentinel's Vault, and Vance Guy Sentinel's Mod, and not least great games products. Please support the official release and flip.